Hi, my name is Justin Langlois, and I'm an artist living and working on unceded Coast Salish territory in Vancouver, BC. Um, I'm putting together this artist talk in support of a workshop that I'm giving at the Campbell River Art Gallery um, later in November in 2020. And this is connected to an exhibition I'm a part of uh, called How We Lead, uh, which also featured a really amazing artist, uh, Lou Chan, also based in Vancouver. Uh, I'd like to gratefully acknowledge that as I am an uninvited guest on unceded Coast Salish territory, um, that means that uh, I'm living here uh, to work and also to, uh, you know, just live my life, but I'm on unceded territory, uh, which was never surrendered, uh, was never won over in any battle, and uh, it's effectively stolen land. Um, so I'm very grateful to be a guest here, but I need to always remember that I am indeed a guest. Um, so with that, I am going to uh, talk through a few different artworks of mine um, for the next 15 or 20 minutes. And to do that, I'm going to start by sharing my screen. And I think I will share um, my entire desktop here so that I can also go like this. Okay. So um, I'm an artist uh, who has often worked uh, with text and uh, in kind of collaborative and public settings. And what that means is that um, I think a lot about how my work uh, kind of encounters the public beyond the gallery um, and indeed how it sort of uh, bumps into or is situated alongside other parts of the public realm. Um, the earliest parts of my uh, work in text was based in Windsor, Ontario, which is um, at the very uh, bottom of the province and right across the uh, international border from Detroit, Michigan. And um, I, I kind of use this as a starting point to locate this practice because a lot of this work was really in response to, um, to the built environment in this place. And, and I'm showing you this, which is a sort of you know, one, one, one picturesque uh, part of, of Windsor. This is the uh, international tunnel that connects Windsor and Detroit. And it tells a really specific story. Um, it, it kind of says that we're, uh, we're a car culture. We're interested in, um, in, you know, kind of multinational brands. Um, there's half of a maple leaf there um, and not a whole lot else going on. And these are all of the stories that are told about um, a place like Windsor through the way that it's built and how we encounter it. Now there's these other stories that other folks put up. Um, this is a, a sticker that um, somebody kind of stuck on a, a road sign at some point. And this is a different story about Windsor. Um, this is a, 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 a kind of a more personal take on, on how to feel about a place like that. And maybe we all have different kinds of um, interests or disinterests in, in where we live and how we live. But I kind of wanna show you know, this is an unofficial narrative, this is an unofficial narrative, and there are things that, um, that artists can do to kind of work in between those spaces. So this is the skyline of, of Windsor, Ontario, and um, early on in the work that I was doing there, I, was, uh, I had founded a collective called Broken City Lab, and we would uh, think about the entire city, the entire urban uh, environment as a, a kind of a, a play site, a, a test lab for different kinds of artistic interventions. This is the view from Detroit. And we were curious about, um, you know, sort of how uh, a, a big casino like Caesars gets to broadcast their message kind of all day, all night um, uh, to another country. And we wondered, well, what else could be said? Um, so we worked with uh, uh, some, uh, uh, basically, my, my brother was teaching high school at the time. We were working with some of his um, math students to figure out how large this uh, Caesar sign was. And we figured it out. We started to put together some um, kind of projection uh, based uh, kind of small apps. And we started coming up with messages that we wanted to project. Um, and so we, we went out in the city and did all these kind of test uh, projections. And some of them uh, were maybe on buildings that were a bit too dark. Some of them worked a little bit better, but we were carrying around a laptop and a projector and like a car battery to kind of make this all work. Uh, and finally, we settled on a building that uh, was uh, sort of visible enough uh, across the border. And we started sending messages like, we've missed you, or we need to talk, or this one, we're in this together. And these messages were visible um, in Detroit. So this is the view from Detroit. 
And you know what's really interesting to me about a, a project like this is that it started out really small. It started as you know kind of this question of like, well, you know, what else could be said um, about this relationship between these border cities? What else might we say to the communities in which we live? And uh, and then scaling that thinking up into wondering about the messages, the format, and we kind of land on a project um, like this, where it's actually a very large uh, and very visible kind of text that I think captures a particular sentiment about uh, what it means to live so close and yet so far. Um, we also worked uh, in billboards. So um, sometimes we would be able to get a small grant um, or work with an artist from center to figure out the kinds of um, you know, logistics involved in getting work up on a billboard. And we, we started this series called uh, basically And Then the City. And it was this idea of an ongoing, never ending narrative. Um, so uh, this idea that, and then the city started to feel better. Uh, and we did a project like this, both in Windsor and in Calgary. Um, and in this case, the, the narrative kept going. And then the city kept doing the same thing it always did. And then the city made up for all of its mistakes. And then the city started to feel a little bit different. And then the city forgot its roots. And all of these things, um, I think, are uh, maybe stories that are both vague enough, but specific enough that we can all tune into them differently. Um, if I think about uh, where I'm living right now in Vancouver, um, and then the city uh, made better decisions, I might think about a particular political moment. Um, I might think about a particular a particular decision that city council made, or um, or uh, maybe even the provincial government that's kind of impacting things that are going on here. Um, but the idea is that these um, narratives kind of locate something in our uh, in our mind, in our memory, um, in our sense of uh, place, and we start to see that place differently, maybe because of it. Uh, we made a book as well, which uh, kind of captures a sort of never-ending narrative about cities, and uh, I often work at these scales moving from very public stuff to um, something that scales in a way where you can distribute it a little bit easier. Um, we also uh, would do, with Broken City Labs, some um, kind of temporary uh, public art installations. And in this case, we were um, invited to participate in a biennial a public art project in Kitchener, Ontario, and uh, called Kafka. And we had this idea that we wanted to have this uh, big text uh, that was going to be situated in a kind of a civic um, like water feature in front of City Hall and it would say reflect on here. So we had kind of done a bunch of sketches and then we started to actually prototype these things um, in uh, kind of in, in uh, first a small scale and then a much larger scale and, uh, and ultimately into a kind of a different format altogether. And it, you know, kind of, again, moving a project from an idea through a sort of um, uh, kind of like mapping or sketching of, of how we might complete it to an actual uh, build out of the project um, is always kind of part of the interesting, it, it's like that's part of the artistic process uh, for me. So we packed up all these letters that we made and we brought them um, to this site in front of City Hall. Um, it was definitely a, a big move because these letters were quite large. And uh, we installed them one by one uh, with the pool drained and then the pool eventually was uh, filled back up. And here's the important thing with this work is that we covered the face of the letters um, so you can see that the letters are kind of black and then the, the faces are white, but they're actually covered in a retro reflective vinyl. So this is the material that you would see on road signs. Um, and so when light hits it, like the flash of a camera or headlights, it sort of like almost burns this hole into the picture, which is kind of interesting. Um, so this is uh, sort of as we're kind of finalizing the installation. And then this is what it looks like when you photograph it with a flash. So. Uh, we kind of like this idea of the project being also a little bit interactive, a kind of a caption in front of City Hall, um, something that um, I, th I think really uh, felt like larger than life and yet was also uh, just really uh, kind of assembled, you know, ad hocly in a way, like we planned it out, but it was just us making it. And that, um, again, that idea of sort of deciding to do something, finding the materials and the wherewithal to do it, and then uh, sort of realizing it is, uh, again, all part of the fun. So we had other ideas about the way that we encounter cities. And, you know, so this is a kind of familiar view, uh, view through Google Maps. Um, and we started imagining like, oh, all of these like big buildings um, in a city have all this opportunity to kind of like say something to an audience who is 
you know, maybe in another place in the world. So we found a parking lot and uh, got some permission to, to make this message where we um, were going to, you know, sort of essentially take over a big part of the parking lot as part of a biennial at uh, the Art Gallery of Windsor. So we got some road sign paint um, from a local paint shop and uh, just started going to work as, as best we could. Um, and this is the message that we ended up writing. Uh, and it says, uh, as of September 21st, 2011, we are alive and well. And it was this idea that we were um, kind of going to create a new narrative about the city as of that moment. As of 2011, things were going to be better from here on out. Um, so that kind of um, spanned into other kinds of projects and opportunities, um, doing things even more kind of community driven. So in this case, we, we did another project that we called the Letter Library, um, where we cut out um, a few hundred uh, individual letters out of like a styrofoam material. And uh, people could come into our little um, storefront studio space and basically take a, a set of letters out and go and caption the city with them and take a picture and come back. So this is like, you come in, the letters are all lined up along the wall. You would grab a stack to spell it, whatever you wanted to spell. Um, and then you would go and kind of install them uh, in wherever you thought it made sense. And you could take this uh, picture and bring it back along with the letters. So in some cases, um, you know, just imagine the entire kind of a, a, like a gallery filled with all these letters. And, um, and so as people would go out and do this and come back, I mean, some of the um, kind of phrases or interventions were more interesting than others. But I think importantly, they were like, the, in some cases, the first time maybe people had sort of played around in, in their city to think about how they could like talk back to their city or talk back to their community. And because these letters were you know, they kind of looked maybe like they could be sort of professional or something like they might almost be like they 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 got um, they like got away from like the sign that they belong to or something. There was it was kind of this cool idea of that of these just sort of popping up in, in and around the city. Um, and so here's like a kind of maybe easier way to see some of the uh, photos. Um, in another project, we were invited to uh, go to Calgary uh, to work with the city's uh, water department. And um, this was a kind of artist in residency situation where we uh, were basically tasked with having a bunch of conversations with city staff who worked in this area um, and come up with artworks that would kind of, um, you know, maybe intervene in, in the idea of how the public thought about sort of the water services or um, maybe even create a, a project along with some of those staff. So we, we spoke with a lot of different people there, and we also started to spend a lot of time along the Bow and Elbow River, which are the major um, rivers that, that go through Calgary. And um, when we were going to do one of our first residencies, it was um, the year that the uh, major Calgary flood happened. And so that turned into um, obviously a delay in the project, but it also meant that these rivers were suddenly uh, they felt very different um, to us both as outsiders and I think folks who, who lived in Calgary. So we started thinking about uh, maybe changing that relationship or suggesting a way to change the relationship that people had with the rivers. So we made these um, kind of Bow River flavored candies. The idea being that the, you know, the water for the municipal services does come from the same glacier that kind of, you know, powers the, the rivers. Um, so we just used tap water, but we made these, these candies that were um, kind of tinted based on different um, colors that we saw in the river. Um, we also looked at these uh, stormwater outfall signs. This is a kind of uh, civic infrastructure that is really not necessarily meant for the public exactly. Um, it's meant to kind of explain to other uh, city workers what exactly is happening at the site. If there's an issue with the stormwater outfall, if it rains too much or whatever, this is where some of the water um, uh, comes out of the system. But we thought that there's, um, you know, that's an opportunity to really uh, think about the ways that uh, this information is communicated to the public. We also made um, books, uh, different ideas of the kinds of images that represent uh, the Bow River online. Uh, we made a 1-800 number where you could call and listen to the bow um, at any time of the day. And we started, uh, again, kind of working on these signs, wondering like uh, the, the question being a way to uh, think differently about, about the Bow River. Um, so we, we worked with the city sign shop to make signs that looked kind of like those stormwater outfall signs, but they had a bunch of questions about the river, kind of asking 
people who would see these signs um, to uh, be curious about how they might describe the river. So they were all in this gallery first, but then we started installing them um, in and around the, uh, the, along the Bow River. So um, is the River Forlorn, is the River Obnoxious, is the River Unfaithful, and these were up for um, quite a while, maybe almost a couple of years, and, and some of them sort of stood up to the elements better than others. But I kind of liked that there was this um, sort of like official communication, this B35 sign that, that kind of indicated that storm, uh, stormwater outfall location, and then these questions underneath that kind of made you reflect uh, on what was going on in the river or, or maybe how you experienced the river. So um, this project was playful. And I think it was also, um, you know, a, a kind of poetic in a way that some of our larger works um, maybe, well, they operate differently, right? This was many, many signs, uh, many, many texts, many, many, many questions, and, and, and other works, they were kind of more singular. Um, but this kind of uh, idea of working iterative, iteratively, which is like working um, an idea maybe through many different channels, and in our case, kind of working um, the same channel, but through many different ideas, I think uh, has been something that's really sort of stuck with me. Um, and this project was also interesting in that it ended in another book. So in terms of publications, because I think that zines and, and things and even like small artist books are also really interesting spaces to think about um, making uh, work because you, you don't need necessarily the support of um, a big gallery or anything. You can kind of just like do this stuff on a photocopier or, or on your computer. And, and if you can print some out, then all of a sudden it's like a project. So work to, um, to make this idea of a bunch of invented emergencies, things that maybe um, slogans, ideas, uh, ways of uh, thinking about who gets to describe an emergency and who doesn't. Um, and a work like this, which is really just like an eight and a half by 11, um, uh, kind of poster, it, it was this idea of a, a declaration of principles for artists. So, um, you know, maybe this photocopy and sort of really worn out poster would get sent around again and again and again um, and become a, a kind of a stand in for um, a, a kind of solidarity or something. So again, artworks don't need to be huge. They can really just be a piece of paper. Um, in other cases, uh, we've made um, these balloons um, or I, I made these balloons. Some projects were Broken City Lab and some projects were mine. And it, to me, it doesn't really matter so much, but um, in the end, a project like this um, it is a, a sort of like a, a very fleeting project, something that's kind of come and gone. These balloons were there for a little while and, and they were filled with wildflower seeds. And so as they would sort of blow around um, a, a, a kind of an urban space and, and eventually pop, these seeds would be distributed and kind of grow wildflower gardens. Um, I've also done projects like this, which are um, uh, maybe a bit more permanent. They're, uh, you know, kind of statements or texts that meant that mean to um, kind of create a, a moment of reflection. And then uh, working on billboards again, and this is starting to be a bit more recent work where I'm thinking about the way in which language um, sort of really shapes how we understand ourselves in, in public life and how it um, also both uh, maybe indicates to other people um, the difference between what, you know, how we act and maybe how we really think we are. Um, and so these kind of dualities or these texts that are, again, like iterative or in a series um, become really interesting to me because it's sometimes hard to just like zero down or zero in on like one single statement um, or one single question. So sometimes I like to work in, uh, in formats that sort of allow a bunch of different texts to kind of come forward. And in some cases I'm working in um, like signs and things that sort of are meant to read. Uh, very official and formal, and in other cases, it's very much just like a uh, something that's meant to feel much more handmade. Um, one of uh, a series of uh, works that I've continued to do um, uh, in a number of different occasions when I have the chance is to make these posters that um, that have a participatory element to them. So, as part of this uh, street meet festival in um, in Saskatoon, which is a kind of street art festival. Um, I made these posters where they sort of had a, um, a statement on them that you would either um, agree with or disagree with or be uncertain about. And um, in this case, they some of the statements are 
um, you know, quite broad, um, as in there are still traces of small and large things we are often ready to forget. There's a kind of poetic um, sense to them. And then others, they're um, kind of maybe much more uh, explicit, like uh, money flows a lot more readily when plans are laid behind closed doors or foregone conclusions are for suckers. Um, and this idea of, of creating these statements that people could uh, kind of like in some ways respond to and then respond to together, I think created this really interesting dynamic. It's kind of like a survey of how a community uh, feels. Um, and in some cases, it's, um, you know, they're, they're quite, uh, they, they lean in, in one direction over another. Um, you can see like, for example, this kind of maybe possibly potentially it might be, it could be, we'll see perhaps, I guess so. You know, that's something that like, you know, it's kind of fun to play around with. Um, and and yet in, in another case, it's like the, uh, one of the ones in the middle there, there are things in the way right now, but patience is virtue. That was pretty split. Like a lot of people said yes to that and a lot of people said no to that. Um, and so I kind of like this idea that these are uh, almost like mirrors that, that we hold up to ourselves and people can kind of respond to. Um, in another project in Saskatoon uh, with AKA Artistron, uh, I was I had the opportunity to kind of use this bottom part of the building um, where the black siding is. And so this is often how I work where there's an opportunity and then I start going in with like Photoshop and just kind of thinking like, oh, what would this look like? And I was thinking that maybe there's some questions that I could ask about the idea of sustenance of about taking care of each other through food. Um, and then I kind of landed on this idea of doing like a glossary, um, uh, a set of words that um, are maybe connected to the idea of sustenance. And some of them in, uh, are pretty direct and some of them are maybe like less clear. And that's what we ended up going with, a little bit smaller than how I had originally imagined. But, um, you know, this idea that sustenance is all of these things, it's anger, it's bake sales, it's caring for someone, cooking, dinner, um, uh, gifts, hope, ice cream, and mothers and fathers and time and wilderness. And, uh, you know, basically going through all the letters of the alphabet and, um, or many of them and, and kind of creating um, some uh, different ways of understanding ideas of sustenance. And uh, one of the more recent projects I've done in Vancouver, um, and I'll begin to wrap up as I talk through this one, um, I was uh, commissioned to work with the City of Vancouver Sustainability Group to create um, a bunch of uh, artworks, or at least a, a, an artwork that came out of a, a residency where I worked with um, uh, staff in the sustainability group for uh, about a year. And uh, I learned a lot about the way that the city um, thinks and, and plans around sustainability and uh, sort of sustainable initiatives. And I started wondering, um, again, about like kind of the form of the question, what, what kinds of questions might be able to prompt us to think differently about, um, in this case, sea level rise. And um, so I, I sort of just did, again, all these mock-ups thinking about um, maybe how they would look if there were just a bunch of signs everywhere and maybe you had to get close to read some and, and others you could see from further away. Um, and maybe they should be all the same color so that you have some sense of um, like what, you know, that they're connected or maybe it would be important that they're all different. And then I found this um, uh, kind of weird old post thing that I guess is from a very industrial time of the city. Um, and I thought that it was this interesting way to frame a view of the downtown. And I started going kind of uh, crazy thinking about these different ways to uh, build uh, or to kind of create a sign that could ask a question that um, seemed really uh, interesting to ask that, you know, as you're thinking about the future, you're not sure what's gonna happen. Um, you hear a lot of um, kind of pretty scary um, ideas of the ways in which sea level rise and certainly climate change overall is gonna impact how we live in cities. And so um, eventually I settled on a, maybe a quieter version of this question. And I worked with a, a sign shop here to, to make something that could uh, kind of get up there. And, and this was it, this, uh, this installation that's called Should I Be Worried? And it's right along the seawall. If you've been to Vancouver, um, maybe you've seen an area like this. But the idea is that you, um, you can kind of view the city through this uh, kind of frame. You can think about uh, development, you can think about uh, the way in, in, in which sea level rise at False Creek might impact things. You can just think about at a, at a sort of an everyday scale, should I be worried about what's happening? And I, this kind of idea of a check-in or this idea of having a question that you can ask again and again um, to sort of, you know, just grapple with what's happening 
in the world. I think it's a pretty, um, you know, it's, it's poetic, but it's also direct. It's, it's something that um, I think has, you know, been an interesting thing to encounter for a lot of different folks. And so that brings us to this project that I have up at the uh, Campbell River Art Gallery, um, which has been this kind of um, really sort of um, vernacular uh, kind of sign that you might see in front of any sort of business or out in public. And I had this um, series of questions that were really thinking about the past and the present and the future, and also inviting folks to participate through these uh, postcards, which you can see in the picture on, on the left there. So this has been an interesting uh, way to kind of think about, again, a series, a series of questions, uh, you know, cropping up in public spaces and in and around the gallery and in this moment of the pandemic and with so many things, um, you know, kind of feeling like they're really in the middle of a lot of change. Um, it's, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, if you've bumped into this, that it's been an interesting uh, question to encounter, or maybe you've already contributed to it through the postcards. Um, but it's been a great opportunity to think about how the question and the form of the question can al also help us to think about um, ideas of the future and of leadership and of the kinds of ways that we need to imagine uh, how those things are going to change. So, uh, yeah, with that, I will um, exit the screen sharing thing and uh, stop that. And just end up with saying uh, thank you very much for. Uh, tuning in, I guess, to this. And I hope uh, it, it was uh, interesting to get to learn about some of my work and my practice. And if you would like to attend the workshop, I hope you'll uh, visit uh, the uh, Campbell River Archive website and uh, sign up there. Thanks a lot.